This is pure luck. They were, they were on the way to me. And, uh... So, <sighs> that was great. Um, what a morning. Mm. I, um, I, I did one of my common mistakes though, and uh, that's probably laziness is uh, my enemy in the morning because I went to bed a little late last night because I was uh, putting the last work into a, a really nice uh, nature conservation trip to Africa, to Kenya. Um, actually a trip uh, you can join if you're interested. I'll uh, tell much more about it um, a little later, but uh, yeah, I worked on that last evening and I came to bed a little late and uh, the result was that when the alarm clock was ringing at five in the morning, I was just so tired and like, instead of jumping on immediately, I, I was in bed like maybe 20 minutes more and then I had to get up and, and uh, you know, uh, it's just a it's just a stupid thing because I hadn't packed the whole thing in the evening so because I was a little tired it just took forever to get batteries and tripods and such stuff together so yeah it's a lesson I should have learned many years ago but yeah in the evening I thought oh well I'll do this in the morning it's better but uh, the the result was uh, I didn't get out uh, until a little to six and that's like an hour at least an hour too late or maybe two hours actually so uh, I went out, uh, walked along this, uh, uh, these uh, trees and uh, where I'm sitting now. And then further that way, suddenly these cranes were there. And I'm like, I have heard them here and I know they're here, but I've never seen them so close. They were like, I don't know how close, uh, a few hundred meters or maybe a hundred meter when they were closest. And when I sat down there, when I got there, like I couldn't say anything. I, I, I doubted that I should, if I should start uh, turning on the little camera there, that one, or I should just photograph, but I, oh, I, I needed to, so I had to turn it on. I don't know what to do. That's why I'm talking now. I really don't know what to do. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to photograph them because they were so close and I thought they were so aware. And when I started to, I did a little noise with the tripod and then like they started to come closer to me, probably because I was in all this clothes, uh, camouflage clothes, and uh, they didn't know what it was, and they got closer and closer into like maybe 55, 70 meters or so, and I didn't dare to do anything. This time I did use the silent shutter. This time I, I just tried to, to stay as still as I could. I didn't dare to make a photo though, uh, because I didn't dare to start to faff around with getting the tripod up in height. But then I decided anyway to make some photos and I'm glad I did because they were, they didn't notice me. Um, I must be well hidden uh, through the reeds. I was just so afraid of my silhouette because you know, if, if I sit here with a dark background, everything is fine. But if I stand up with, a, with the sky as a background and even though I'm well camouflaged, it's just a black silhouette moving. So uh, yeah. I got a little uh, film and I got some photos, but I was struggling with these reeds because they were uh, the, the dead one that, that was were very bright and kind of gave a little like a flare effect on the photo. And then there were uh, the, the leaves, the, 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 the fresh green leaves, and they were constantly in the way. But I tried to use them a little creative by uh, by making them blurry, blur the, the picture on one side of the photo. And then I tried like with the woodpecker, I don't know if you remember how, like I shot through the leaves, but found a little place where the leaves were not covering the photo. I tried to do the same here. So on this photo of the, of the cranes, I had these reeds in the foreground. They were really distracting the autofocus. So what I do here is that um, I'm uh, setting my autofocus to continuously autofocus and then I use the, the back button to, to, to lock it. Uh, that means that I can always push my back button and then override manually. And that's the technique I have used here. 
um, and I can use it as some kind of effect to either blur the photo or blur one side of the photo. As you can see on this one, um, it's the, the cranes in the right side and then you have the, uh, the reeds on the left side of the, of the photo and they are kind of closing the photo over there. And by moving to the right and to the left, I can like change uh, that a little bit and uh, get completely different photos. If you want to um, know more about the, uh, this technique and how I set up my autofocus, please leave a, a comment below and ask your question and I can include that in a, in a, a future uh, behind the camera video or I can actually make a dedicated video about that. So what started out to be like a morning without anything uh, and uh, the light was a little boring and I thought I was too late just turned out to like give me my first photos of the cranes here in this area and then so close and the most important thing is what I'm going to do now because I haven't read that much about the cranes I'm going to look into that I'm trying to find information about the hearing the, the sense of smell you know some birds actually have a brilliant sense of smell like the what are they called uh, you know the one that are always in the cartoon with a naked neck with the one feather and the beak and they always come when when the you know when lucky luke is about to die they will sit around and wait for him i don't know what they're called in english uh, but these birds they have a, a, a like an incredible uh, sense of smell but i want to find out how are the eyesights of the, the cranes, how is the smell of the hearing. I, know, I need to know that and that's how I usually work when I'm photographing this kind of stuff and I don't know anything about it. Um, I know a lot about the fox, I know a lot about the deer, um, I know a lot about the buzzards and, and birds of prey, but I don't know about the cranes. Um, I'm going to co figure it out. I would like to get further down on some of my photos. You can see I have the horizon of the green field and the, the, the dark forest, and that is cutting almost through the cranes or through the cranes. What I would like is to get all the way down and shoot along the field so that, the, uh, so that um, I actually get just above the, the, the grass. That means that the, the cranes will be um, standing there uh, with a beautiful colors uh, with a maybe a dark background so i want to get down in level i couldn't do that here because of all the reefs another thing um, i like to try to uh, because i know the sun is rising over there and uh, if i can get in a position where the sun comes up uh, behind the crane so i get a little uh, silhouette or i get when they do their trumpet thing like quack quack then i can maybe get some some you know now some uh, steam uh, steam coming out of the uh, or moisture coming out of the beak and with a backlight I can maybe create uh, an effect there but you can hear I'm dreaming now but uh, let's see what I get in um, the next uh, uh, weeks so yeah I think that was it and um, yeah I think uh, what I struggle a little about here was uh, I have this big backpack now I have the solar panels the batteries because I wanted to show it uh, having extra batteries in there I have my drone with the batteries and you know I have all kind of uh, things that I don't need um, what I would like to do is um, pack a little simpler because with a, with a, that camera that is filming now on, on the tripod uh, with the binocular with the tripod with all these big things um, I struggle a little with the because the weight and the, the, the volume makes it really hard it's just like the opposite of walking just me and a lens without anything else like without tripod without anything i talked a little about that in the last behind the camera video but um, i think next time i'll try to pack a little different or make a little base camp close uh, not a base camp but a, a little camp close to where i'm going to photograph where i can put all my stuff and then just go with the tripod and the camera and the binocular and the vlogging camera and the coffee and then I think that's a better tactic. Yeah, but um, the light is getting a little uh, hard now. Uh, I'm going home now to have a nap to prepare a lecture for tomorrow evening and uh, doing a little uh, doing a little work, uh, office work, uh, boring work, <laughs> really boring work uh, that I don't like. Um, and then I'm uh, yeah going to have a nap so I can get ready for this evening.
because at this time of the year uh, where the sun rises at uh, a little past four and it, uh, it, 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 it sets uh, uh, after 10, you know, it's, uh, I don't have uh, the light and the night is not long enough. So what I usually do is uh, I get a little few hours during the night and then I have a good nap during the day because uh, evenings and mornings uh, are the, the good time for me. That is where the animals are active. That is where there's no noise. That is where it's beautiful. There's still dew drops on the, on the grass when I got up this morning. So uh, yeah, time to get another cup of coffee here and uh, then I'll go back home and um, yeah, uh, see you this evening. Looking forward to see if we see anything up there. Oh yeah, just in the evening, I think it's tempting to go down here again, but I think I want to go to the forest because I haven't been there for a while. I want to go up and see, do you remember last year with the badger, uh, that forest where I saw the fox, just one of my very first videos. Uh, I'll link to it up here. That the, it was my very first video I did here on YouTube about a year and a half ago. I was walking in the forest and talking to the camera. It was the very first time I was vlogging. So I, it was incredible weird to walk with that tripod and, and talk into the camera. And then I, I, I talked and talked and talked and took on my 3D camera class. And then suddenly in the middle of everything, the fox just ran over like this. And I just got one picture of the fox at the end of the road. And then it disappeared again into the forest. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that forest. I think I'll go up there tonight and see if I can see uh, some deer, badger, fox, whatever. But uh, yeah, see you tonight. lightning it's the thunders are like this is fantastic there's a fox there's a fox thank god i did not go home just after the thunder and the rain like i'm totally soaked but it, it's worth every single drop of rain <sighs> that was a crazy experience i mean it was like double up on getting something i didn't expect i could see like around six o'clock five o'clock i could see how it was building up with like this dense feeling of rain and you know i thought there's a thunder coming in and uh, mm, i just got up here and you know when i was walking down there um towards the the badger trying to sneak my way and it suddenly started i could hear in the background like I knew rain is coming and then when within I, I mean I got so wet I was totally soaked within like 20 minutes I had rain jackets on here but uh, just normal uh, hiking uh, trousers I like everything it just went down my legs in my shoes and th that was the point I think I said to this camera like uh, oh everything is wet <laughs> I need to uh, just continue filming because I wanted to capture this mood. Just this one is so full of rain and water and it's dripping because I really want to film like these beautiful patterns with the fog. And it's so surrealistic when I sit here now. It's so quiet, the birds are singing, there's almost no wind. Ah, and then just like three, four hours ago, it was pouring down. Yeah, but I'm so happy I didn't like shut off the camera and put it down in the safe camera bag. I, uh, I just continued to shoot uh, with the video of the rain pouring down and the leaves and the, all this stuff. And I, yeah. Um, yeah, and then I decided to, uh, to, to call that a day and I, 
finish the, the, the video, the vlog. I can't wait to share some of this with you. Uh, just a little rainy mood and uh, to share some of the cranes from this morning. And then I think this has been a very, very different day, but uh, see you out there. And then there was just something in my mind saying, oh, I can't go home now. Uh, this evening is still young. I, I, <laughs> I need to be here a little more. And um, I, ca I can't remember, so I just re remember I thought, let me just go to the, to the meadow and see if there's a deer. I went there and there were no deer. And I thought, oh, just a little more, just a little more. I just had this feeling that I had to continue. And oh, I'm glad I did because there's a fox, there's a fox. When I saw, like, when I saw that fox, I was like, what do I do, what do I do? Because that is where it's becoming really, really challenging because, like, I want to get the photos. But at the same time, I want to share it on that camera, the blocking camera. But having to turn that on and off and focus and uh, the sound and all that kind of stuff and at the same time concentrate on the fox and concentrate on one tripod with a 600 millimeter and another tripod with that one having these things going on is extremely difficult especially not when i'm photographing a plant or from inside my blind but when i'm out here exposed all the movements all the tripod hitting tripod that you know that you know the sound of tripod hitting tripod is just not a good combination with a, a, a deer and foxes and, and, and animals with a good hearing. So I try to find that balance between just put up the walking camera and get in position, but then I had to go back and get the... Bah, that was challenging and it was too challenging today. I, I got some really good photos of the... Uh, at least some some photos of the fox uh, that I really like because it was so wet and um, but it disappeared too fast I didn't really get anything really good um, but but as I continued up and I saw the hairs and I saw the second fox it just became too much with that camera so like my thought was just let me let me get what I can, let me share what I can, but I need to get some photos, I need to get some video here. This is this situation is unique. And I was um, just trying to concentrate on getting something really good. And I had to make up my make up my mind because I decided to leave my camera back behind. It was too uh, heavy or too bulky. I decided to then I wanted to use the tripod, then I didn't want to use the tripod. And to be honest, I would have pre preferred without the tripod, but it was already getting too uh, too dark. Um, I ended up uh, photographing on uh, ISO 12,000 uh, on f4 uh, with a 250 of a second with a with a 600 millimeter with a 1.4 converter, and that was just incredible uh, low light. So yeah, I I, uh, I needed the tripod to to make a decent. Uh, uh, without the decent <laughs> sharp photos without they were too blurred and then comes this moment like that was insane because i was sitting there i can't remember it very clear now but i just remember i was sitting there uh, photographing the hair and then i thought okay well i leave that little camera behind because it's going to destroy the whole thing that i'm faffing around let me just concentrate with like uh, like before I started doing the, the vlogging thing, it's just me and my camera and then the hair. Let me just get that moment and I left that camera behind. And I was only maybe, to, uh, not, not 20, 10, 15 meter. And I kneeled down and I got the photo and the video of this beautiful little hair. When I suddenly in the background, like I could see something brown. And when I looked up, it was like a back of a, of a deer. And then a head came up and that was the red deer and instantly i regret that i didn't have that camera because that moment was just it it was just so insane because when i was looking at the red deer the hair would jump in front of the picture and i have just you know the f before that i had the fox and it was just so 
it was just so insane how much much happened within a few hours and the fox let me just jump back to the fox the fox when i when i saw that on the other side of this uh, these trees i just need i have to go all the way down to the end but then luckily i found a tiny spot where i could photograph him and with the with the use of the foreground i got this really nice blurry thing a dreamy thing like i got with a woodpecker and this wet fox very dark because it was so wet wet just walked around out there and it came closer and closer to the point where i was afraid that it should see that it was me sitting there and then it got so close that i think it it, it caught my smell and um yeah it, it then like walked the other way and then disappeared um not to not scare or anything but uh, it didn't come back i think it could smell me i think there was some scent hanging there because everything is so wet and there was a tiny bit of wind yeah but uh, that was incredible now when i then continued down then then it, i saw these hairs and i went out to photograph them these red deer they were just so incredible close and they got closer and closer and closer and they there was nothing I could do because I was there sitting in the middle of the field in my 3D camouflage but still I think they were at like I don't know 35 meter six or, or, or five or six red deer with the small ones and at that point I was just getting afraid of scare, scaring them because I was sitting there and at some point they would smell me and at some point they will they will see a small movement. So what I tried to do there was I actually tried to back out. Uh, I tried to get away from them again. Um, every time they looked down, uh, had their back to me, it moved back and I almost got all the way back to, to where the tree were because then I knew I would be much better, much better hidden there. But then one of them saw me i think or saw a movement and then they all had their head up and then it was like a staring contest i was sitting there trying to i was just looking down so they couldn't see my face and i could see they were definitely just all staring at me and then they were like took their head up and then they 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 ran off uh again uh, no like panic but but they knew i was there so um the good thing is uh, I could hear them stopping in the forest and when I went back they came out again. So they are not been that scared. They did not know it was a human probably because of this close. So uh, yeah, they came out again and uh, but at that point I was already uh, getting out. Yeah, oh, I think uh, what I have learned from this day is uh, sometimes it's just, you know, in the morning I thought, no, it's not so good. I went out still with the camera, a cup of coffee, and I got the crane pictures and a beautiful morning. And then now here I got soaked, it was raining. Uh, I was tempted to pack down and I, all, I was almost uh, getting out of here when I realized, oh, let me just a little more. And it really, really, really pay, paid off. Uh, I can't remember when I have had such an opportunity last, like so many deer, you know, so many animals, deer, foxes, uh, hares, uh, like within one single evening, it's, uh, it's crazy. But uh, what a day, what a day. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, time for me to get the last of my tea and uh, then it's probably, it's late, I'm getting tired. You can probably hear that. It has been a long day, early up and late to bed. It's uh, after 11 now, so uh, let me get my cup of tea and then, yeah, see you out there. Mm -hmm.